Today is Saturday, December 2nd, 2017. Welcome to the Survivor Fans Podcast. I'm Joanne. And I'm Stacy. And this is the Listener Feedback Show for Survivor Season 35, Week 10's Double Episode. Double, double, double episode. Yeah, that was an excited one. Exciting one. <laughs> excited. I'm excited. The episodes were exciting. And I'm looking forward to hearing what the other super fans thought. There's definitely some themes I was hearing as I was putting the audio bits together. There's some questions people have that they're wrestling with why in particular one person wasn't voted out so we'll get to that here shortly all righty anything we need to add before before we get going no other than we're going to read the questions and answers from jp at the end of the episode yeah we'll get to that little bucket of joy when we wrap up (laughs) okay let's see what pete had to say hey joanne and stacy this is from Boston calling here. Oh my God. What a double boot episode. Woo! Yeah. Double blind side. That was Pope's always says, I'm doing challenges. That's how you play Survivor. Wow. I gotta say, guys, hats off to Ben, Lauren, and Devin. And I'll even give a little, a little bit to Ashley, because she's a she was a beast in those challenges there. But man, what an episode. Lauren went from went from doing nothing in the uh, hustle at camp, really. Now now she's becoming a very good player. And I think Ben better would choke for her. I mean, Ben's probably the odds on favorite, but Lauren is holding her own, and she got the advantage. And then Devin, which out for him, he's a wild card, guys. All right, Devin was the one that I think made the second move happen with uh, Joe, because it looked like he was telling Ben what to do there, which was awesome. I think it's going to come down to those three. Imagine if that's the final three. Ben, Devin, and Lauren, that would be nuts. But I think Ben is just too much of a threat. Wow. And Dr. Mike, well, he's a character now. He's just digging himself in his own grave at this point. I feel bad for the dude. Like Probe said, I don't know what to think of him. And man, Chrissy and Ryan, you know, so much for being super fans of the game. You would think they have more self-awareness knowing seven is no final three. Man, that's what happens when you're overconfident there. And while clearly you could see what they didn't they didn't expect that when a JP got blindsided. Wow. I don't know. I think I don't know who's gonna be voted out next. If it's gonna be Dr. Mike or Ryan or Chrissy. I don't know. Although I give Chrissy her due. She won that challenge on a big comeback, which was huge. And and, and when you're a super fan since the beginning, that's always great to see that fulfilled. So hats off, Chrissy. But man, I gotta ask you guys, Joanne and Stacey, JP, right? Did he even get a confessional before that blind side in the first part of the show? I don't think he did that I saw. You know, we just saw him wandering around. I know he spoke for like five words, it felt like uh, a tribal. That really was it, though. So much for playing for poor JP and Joe. I guess it, I guess it was coming. So I'm gonna say this is more for Joe. Na 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 na. Hey hey hey. Goodbye. I mean Joe, man. Yo, know, he kept he kept thinking that yo know, he was playing Ben. Meanwhile, it was the other the other way around. Now Joe got outplayed by Ben and Lauren and Devin. But what an awesome awesome double boot. All right, guys. Take care. Ooh. All right. Thanks, Pete. I don't recall seeing anything of JP, but you could probably say that for him pretty much the whole season, except in challenges. So I'm glad to hear you enjoyed it that much. 
Next up, we got an email from Dylan in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. I thoroughly enjoyed the double episode this week. Last time I wrote in, I talked a little bit how I thought the game was set up well for Devin or Lauren to win, and I think this week's episode backs up my theory pretty well. I like what Lauren did to strategically choose the three others to take on reward and then offer them the final four. That was a great strategy on her part and shows for the first time that she is actually playing the game. I was also seriously impressed with Devin for thinking of using Ben as a double agent and with Ben himself for putting on a pretty convincing performance. Ben being used as a double agent gives him the most maneuverability in this game right now and sets him up nicely to play from either side. I believe this will prove to be very important because the alliance of four will not last long. Lauren, Ben, and Devin are all trying to think ahead to final tribal and will not want to sit there together. I'm currently cheering for Devin, even though he thinks he's playing way better than he actually is, and I hope that he's able to realize what a huge threat Lauren is before it is too late. If I was in his place at this point, I would try to bring along Mike and Ashley, who seem to have had the least impact on the game, and who you can use as your numbers to get out Ben and Lauren eventually. Assuming a final three, I think the players sitting at final tribal will be one of either Devin, Lauren, or Ben, along with Mike and Ashley. Whoever's able to drag along Mike and Ashley to the final will have an easy win in my eyes. I'm looking forward to next week's episode already, and I'm cheering hard for Chrissy to go home. She just rubs me the wrong way. I really hope that Devin doesn't fall for the fake idol, although that would be very ironic given how he thinks that he knows everything and is playing so well. As Kendrick Lamar said, be humble, Devin. I would like to see Mike win the immunity challenge because you can tell how badly he wants it, and he needs something to put on his almost non-existent resume. Believe it or not, being part of the comedy duo of Coco Nuts does not count as a signature moment as on Survivor. I believe we could see Ben running back to Ryan and Chrissy, and Mike may try to switch sides once again now that Joe's out. Mike may have to go back to Ryan and try to work with him at this point because the Alliance of Four, minus Ben, lied to him about the last vote. In regards to Chrissy's super idol gifted to her from Ryan, I don't remember them ever showing an actual idol. I thought she might have just received a piece of paper, kind of like the Secret Advantage papers, which would make it useless as a decoy and would better explain why she has not gone down that road yet. Nah, that's an interesting idea. I don't remember off the top of my head either. Thanks for your hard work. I can't wait to hear Joe's interview. I'm sure it'll be very entertaining. Thanks, Dylan. Yeah, Joe Joe gave a pretty good interview, huh? He sounded tired. I guess that would be the one thing that kind of kind of characterized it. Yeah, we were a little tired, too, up late finishing off the recap and then getting questions ready. Thinking that we actually had some questions that we were going to have to get in oh, okay. early for JP, too. Mm. Next up, we got a call from Shay. Hello, Joanne and Stacy. This is Shay. Was that not two of the best hours of TV you've seen in, like, the longest time? I I don't even know where to begin. The first thing that comes to mind is I absolutely love that Lauren made sure we understood Ryan was wrong about who she chose. And the moment they sat down to eat, she explained to us exactly what she meant as she explained it to them. I couldn't believe the gut and the intelligence that she just threw right on out there and said, okay, so this is what we should do. And I was so proud of her for making that move. I was proud of Ben for being willing to step out of the lead and follow. I thought it was a great Mm -hmm. idea. I loved that when she said, let's all just give out the information that Devin was like, Ryan's got an idol. And I was really glad to see that. Lauren followed up matching her own information about her extra vote and that they really did put everything on the table. What I did not get, though, is why they made such a big move to take out JP. JP has never made a decision on his own. If he's won an immunity challenge, I don't remember it. He has no gameplay whatsoever. There's no way anybody would have given him money. So why they didn't use it to get rid of Chrissy, who has made big moves and is clearly intelligent, the kind of smart that could spell, oh, I don't know, an 11-letter word, it made no sense to use that big move to get rid of JP. But I was still glad they made the move. I won't lie, I hated to see Chrissy win, but at the same time, just like when Cole won, I was excited because they were going to have to do something different. And 
I thought it was really smart when they started talking about Ben, and I don't know where it all changed and went back to Joe, but I was equally glad with that. I don't think there could have been a wrong move. And I am still at a place where I'm okay with any one of these people winning, including Dr. Mike. I mean, any all the people left, I would be glad to see win. If Lauren's not careful, though, she may be the one they take out next. I mean, she has just shown how smart she actually is. And she's a single mom who works on a fishing boat. I mean, come on. Who doesn't give her the money? You know, and that sucks because I really like her. I would love to see her win. But if everybody else around her is even half as smart as she is, she'll be the next to go. I guess we'll see. I cannot wait to hear what everybody else has to say. I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say. And I can't wait until next week when the show comes back on. Ah, Anyway, woo, go Survivor. (laughs) <laughs> we really enjoyed what you had to say, Shay. Yeah, the, this question that Shay brought up is definitely one that we're going to hear multiple times about why did JP go when he went, given what JP has to offer the game, right? So we'll hear more about that, I'm sure. And it's a good point about Lauren. you gotta be got to be wondering. I I can't help but think that sometimes, especially for the, the castaways that are fans, that they're not thinking a little bit about what the boot order signifies in terms of the amount of money you end up getting from that stipend they have to be yeah and that means that they're kind of, they're they're playing a game and they're saying you know what that's that's enough money there for you <laughs> you take that much and we're going to keep this other person on a little bit longer if you're in a controlling alliance so that they can get a little more maybe I, that's ha- that's it must I'm have sure figured in at some point I'm that sure. people were thinking about that. Oh, yeah, sure. Even people asking, please, just let me get this little bit, this extra five grand. Yeah, <laughs> good deal. Thanks, Shay. Next up, we got email from Tina in Virginia. Hey, guys. Cole and JP here. Like you know, we've been listening and wanting to write to you for, like, you know, a really, really long time, like ages ago. Like, your show is really super, super cool. Like, really way cool. You two are such a super, super cute couple. And, you know, you are really chill and, like, you really get us millennials. Like, you know, people say we are the future. Yeah, like, that's tomorrow and after tomorrow. Like, we two dudes were voted out because we were strong and, like, super big threats. Yeah, like, you know, we are super good looking and super strong. Yeah, that's like a, like, double whammy. And our strength, you know, like, that scared those other guys. Yeah, they were like, we can't beat JP and Cole. That's just so, so, so wrong, dudes. You know, we really think they were jealous of us, dudes, because, like, you know, we are one really strong, two, really smart, and three, really strategic, like a double whammy. So, like, you know, they just voted us out back to back. Like, that means one after the other, just like that. Game over for us. Super, super bummer. Anyway, talk to you later, dudes. JP and Cole, a.k.a. Tina. Thanks, Tina. I guess I I shared with you my dislike for having to deal with the words like and you know so mm-hmm. you responded in kind <laughs> how sweet of you <laughs> hey i read it yes you did you chose mm. to read it <laughs> very nice what a combination You're welcome. Mm-hmm. double whammy thanks <laughs> tina next up we got a call from rhonda she's got some life lessons she's gonna share hi joanne and stacy hi everyone it's rhonda from portland Once again, I've been slacking. I did finally buy headphones, though. I know everyone's been on the edge of their seat wondering if I finally got headphones. I went to Mm -hmm. Target, and I went there at like 8 o'clock in the morning on a Monday. By the way, if you're going to go to Target, 8 o'clock in the morning is the time to go. Smart tips from Rhonda. Um, Okay, so I got headphones. I'm slacking on listening to podcasts, though. We're having our bathroom remodeled. Everyone wants to know this stuff, right? So we're having our bathroom remodeled, and it has been... Oh my gosh, it's been so terrible. So I'm not really listening to podcasts, but I am watching the show. The show was really good this week. So happy JP is gone. And that bit of 
blob that barely talked is off of my screen. Kind of happy that, what was his name? Was his name Joe? That Joe is gone too. Although I think it was a mistake to vote him out. Why didn't they vote out Ryan? Everyone knew that Ryan had an idol and that he was being blind, that he could have been blindsided and they didn't vote him out. I don't, I don't get that. Why aren't people doing what I think they should do? That's really the big question. So mm -hmm. Ryan's in the game. He's probably going to win now. And I like Lauren. I think Lauren could win. You know who's not going to win is Devin. Which is good, because I like looking at Devin. But Devin is too smart for his own good, according to him. Did you notice how many times Devin said he was smart? And that Devin said he's running the show? That is the editor's way of saying, ha ha, no you're not. So that'll be fun to watch. And again, not a huge fan of Chrissy. So there is my assessment. I know better than everyone else and go to Target at 8 o'clock on a Monday morning. Don't ever have your bathroom remodeled. Life lessons from Rhonda. And also I love Lauren. Okay, I will talk to you all next time I talk to you. Hope everyone's doing well. Thanks for the podcast and bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks, Rhonda. She sent a picture of her bathroom. That's mm -hmm. a, it doesn't look like a remodel. It looks like the room was just destroyed. You know, it's it's down to the studs out. and the, the two-by-fours. All just, just the it's framing strict. of the room. You couldn't well, tell what kind of room it was. Well, you remember what ours looked like when we had the shower redone. Yeah, yeah. So... I, and uh, that could be disconcerting just I'm, getting to see it visually. I, I didn't even know Target was open at eight in the morning. <laughs> not that I would care because I don't. Morning is not Joanne's time. It's not we'll say my that. time of day. No. Yeah. So the odds of me going at eight in the morning, there would have to be something seriously up. Thank you for that wonderful advice, though, Rhonda. Stacy could. Next up, we've got email from Mike in Omaha. What a couple of episodes it's been. Busy last week with Thanksgiving, but it was great to hear my fellow Survivor fans had a nice holiday. Well, my JSFL picks the last few weeks were crap, but I figure why not have a little fun and take risks? I guess I ought to promise to be less chancy and more ho-hum in the future. I hope Chrissy wins it all. As an actuary, I'm sure she can help me with my risk management profile. Guess I can't make any more fun of JP. CBS seems to do enough of that, not giving him any confessionals on his boot episode and then screwing America out of seeing his final words. Come to think of it, that might be for the best. Mm -hmm. I feel that JP is unique and that people like him aren't often cast on Survivor, but after this season, I can't say it's hard to see why. Having said that, I think the new power group made a serious area in ridding themselves of JP, who was really no threat to anyone over Chrissy or Ryan. So thrilled my initial take on Lauren was spot on, which was basically that she's awesome. Joe's a good strategist. I think he's funny and a good guy, but I'm glad he's gone. As they always have been, my feelings on Joe are mixed. I feel like I'm in the severe minority not loving Dr. Mike. He's an underdog. He is entertaining, but oddly, that doesn't make me want to cheer for him at all. Again, I'll mention the edit because this season, it's really playing a big role for me as a viewer. The second episode we saw on Wednesday ruined any surprise for me by how it was edited. I knew Chrissy was winning immunity, and I could tell Joe's head was on the chopping block. I feel like Ashley is a smart player, but if she were winning, we'd have seen more of her already. Devin is too hard to call, but my gut tells me he's not at Final Tribal. I do think Ben's number is going to be up sooner than later. It's pretty obvious you guys aren't Chrissy's biggest fans, and I don't think you're alone, but I still have a feeling Chrissy can win the whole dang thing. I do agree with you, Joanne and Stacy, that her turning down Dr. Mike's hug was a lapse in judgment. She, above anyone, ought to know you play Survivor 24-7, never miss an opportunity to garner affection from a player. My girl Chrissy's running out of options as to who she can sit next to at the end. Ryan's looking more and more like a solid choice, though. If they're both in the finals, that's going to be a bloody fantastic, a real nail-biter as to who comes out on top. I think Ryan might be a better speaker, but I think he's every bit as disingenuous as Chrissy, if not more so. I don't think he's going to be able to pull the wool over anyone's eyes. 
I really am enjoying this season. Every one of the final seven is interesting and has some aspect to them that makes them cheerable. Aren't you guys and all the fellow listeners and fans loving it? Everyone is telling everyone's secrets, and shockingly enough, it's making for as interesting of a finish as if everyone were tight-lipped. This season has left us with a bunch of fairly savvy players, and we get to see them all scheme, plot, and backstab. That's the name of the game, baby. Thanks, Mike. I think that's a great summary of what we're looking at this season. I'm not sure that enough of the jury would know that Ryan's really been playing hard. He would Mm -hmm. really have to sell it. Uh, Otherwise, I don't think they know Ryan's even playing the game. I think they would see him as kind of a coattail rider or something because I don't think he's shown enough of what he's doing. Yeah, based so. on that little bit that Joe dropped in his interview. Uh, yeah. Like, he, he, he had no know. clue. Yeah. And I thought, oh, okay, well. And it's kind of hard to latch on to someone right at the end. It, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, They've already formulated their ideas about it, so. Probst has talked about that before, about how you can feel the clock running out on you, and there's just not time. I mean, he... He uses that as a motivational to get you to make moves earlier, obviously. But it's true. You can you can be at the end and not have done anything yourself to to have brought you there. Sometimes you just get brought. Yeah, you'd really have to sell it and be good at it Mm because otherwise, I don't I don't know if they really can get their mind changed once they get there. It'd have to be something spectacular, I think, to change their minds, if that's the way they were already And it has deciding. to happen on multiple fronts. Someone else has to get knocked down, and somehow you get to, you have to be mm-hmm. raised up for a comeback like that to occur. Thanks again, Mike. Next up, we got a call from Marla. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. Hi, Survivor friends. This is Marla without Sarah. We just remembered we forgot to do our feedback on the way to gymnastics, and Sarah had to jump out of the car, so she left me to record alone. And I don't even know if it'll get in. We're so late. We spent Thanksgiving weekend getting all caught up on Survivor. It was so much fun. We watched seven episodes in a row, which was really neat. It was interesting to watch the season that way. I have never done that. And we had a lot of fun. Sarah is a big fan of Devin, and she was very happy to see that this week he was starting to wear his hair in her beloved man bun. So she is reminded of Joe, and I think she might even be a bigger fan of Devin. So I, again, uh, bite my nails thinking, oh, no, when he's voted out, she'll be so sad. I am kicked out of JSFL because I didn't do my picks a few weeks in a row because I was starting, I was trying to not be spoiled from the season, but that's okay. It was still fun to get to watch the whole season that way. We're all caught up. Um, I think Sarah was thinking that she better work on her spelling because that challenge made her think, "Uh uh-oh, I better work on spelling. I get so choked up every time I see them get a letter from home that I, I can almost not even watch. And then, of course, next week is the family visit that just we love to watch it. We usually rewind it and watch it three times or more. I hope all is well. I hope you all had a happy Thanksgiving. And hopefully both of us will talk to you soon. Thanks, Joanne and Stacy, for all you do. Bye. All right. Thanks, Marla. Good Bye. to hear from you. Yeah. That had to be fun to binge and catch up like that. We've been binging on Australian Survivor. So it's just that there are 27 episodes. I think it's confusing me, though. We season. binge on that, and then I get all confused with what I saw on this one. Or, no. Wait a minute. What? That's not, that's not what it was at all. You just got confused between the double episodes. You think? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it was a long Brain night. was not working. Oh, so good to hear from you, Marla. <laughs> Next up, we got audio from Drew. Hey, Joanna, Stacy. Hey, everyone. This is Drew, and today we have Kitty, Kitty and Joey and Adelaide and Waffles. Per per per. Couple of kids, a couple of felines, and me. And so we got a quick recording to do this Saturday morning, guys. Yes, yeah, Saturday. Let's morning. just lead with this, okay? Full points wow. on a double elimination week. Congrats. That's right. Here's the thing. When I was listening to the feedback, I had two ideas. The first idea was, oh, someone said a final three of Chrissy, JP, and Ryan. You know what? I think that's actually going to happen, and it's going to be Chrissy. I think that's the final three. But then, I had another thought, I think just a few minutes later, I think that JP might be in trouble, actually. He's been just too invisible to be 
third place, you know? I went with Joe and JP, and lo and behold, it was not the order I expected, so I'm glad it was a double episode. I probably would have not gotten the points, because I really thought they were just going to go Joe next and then mix things up, but you know, they mix things up now, and so that was great for me. And I mean, this was a great week all around. I thought it was just really good. I think the most interesting thing for me this week was to see just how people's attitudes and behavior completely changed once their position was altered. Like Chrissy and Joe, I think especially, and Mike, they were just completely turned around and Ryan too, I guess. It was just really interesting to see that their entire demeanor, their entire gameplay, everything about them changed once their position in the game changed. And I guess that happens a lot, but it seemed really especially evident here. Maybe they were highlighting that because it's just so interesting. And yes, I think that this long con with Ben is just brilliant. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this on Survivor. And at first I was like, wait, 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 what's their plan? And why? What is it? What? I had to like stop and pause it and just think about it for a minute because I was like, why are they doing and then as it unfolded I just thought this was amazing because everyone in the Facebook group was like how can it be a blindside they're hyping it up as a blindside how can it be a blindside if it's Joe and I thought well it could be a blindside in a lot of ways these words in the ads that could be kind of misleading to us like maybe it's a blindside of us or maybe they think they're safe for some reason or it's a blindside of someone else in the alliance I mean it could be a million things so I thought I just gotta stick with Joe and then that was not the way I expected it to happen but it was just amazing great job Ashley it's hilarious how she's finally like wait a second I'm not playing Oh my goodness. And she and Devin, I feel like they're so confident and no one seems to be annoyed how cocky especially Devin is being. But I can't help but think they're setting them up for a major... They didn't, that doesn't seem like a winner's edit the way that Devin is talking, you know what I mean? So it seems like they have to be setting them up for something terrible. Chrissy, boohoo. But I think if I got to that point and things started to fall apart, I'd be pretty messed up too. Ben, amazing. My USB, found an idol. I think his hat was a character this week because, you know, he had that celebratory throw it up in the air when he found that idol. Of course, there was that closely guarded his teeth kind of set when Devin put his hat on I'm no cowboy but I know enough to not mess around with that Lauren is just in a great position I think that I have her in my final four but only because Charlie randomly picked her so maybe he has the touch right Charlie? yeah you have the magic touch? yeah and then Mike I love pizza you love pizza? (laughs) me too son I love cat food oh kitty loves cat food okay Mike just gosh that guy I don't know there's no words he's just a silly guy a nice guy but I don't know comes to Survivor, he's just full of funny ideas. And Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. Okay, as he was trying his best to win over um, Mike at the end, oh, I've always wanted to work with you, this and that. I was like, oh, nice try. Nice try, Ryan. Everything he kept doing this week, I kept saying, nice try, nice try. Winner of the week, Ben, because brilliant. I know it wasn't exactly his idea, but he pulled it off. Loser of the week, probably Joe. I mean, he acts like he knew he was going home, but he was doing that fast blink. I don't know, I think he got pretty blindsided. Until this week, I was like, aw, how sweet. He's playing a great game for third place. Aw, but I guess he didn't even get that far. All right, I think we might get a Christmas tree today. We'll see. Talk to you all later. Yeah, Christmas time. You have anything to say, Charlie? Maybe, Goodbye. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Goodbye. Okay. What about you, babe? Goodbye. Talk to you all later. Purr, purr, purr. All right. Thanks, Drew. Well, I, I, you know, one obvious setup looks like it's coming for Devin is the fake idol. So I don't know that that means he's going, but he's going to get faked out by that more than likely. So I'm hoping that's all that is. It's a fake out. A humbling sort of level set him, and then he can mm. he can move forward again from there. I, I think Ben overhears something, and he's uh, not happy with his group. Yep, but he did pledge last to Devin, so we'll see. Mm. Maybe it's repairable. Those are the ones you that gotta hurt the most. Take take what you can get at a certain point now that they're this far along in the game. What do you think it, it would be like for Chrissy to end up being the goat? You know she knows what a goat mm, is in this yeah, case. Yeah, I don't that think... Would, that would be unsettling, wouldn't it? I don't think they should test that one. No. I think she's just too dangerous to have at the end. I would think so. But we don't get to see, and, and granted, that some of that is what we got from the Joe interview. We don't get to see how they react Perceive to her. Perceive them, too. Yeah. yeah. So we just, don't get a clear view that I don't know... I don't know what level of truth is in it, but Joe's talking like there's more negativity towards her than there was towards him. Hmm. So, so that would be something to consider. Even well, if he's half wrong, that's still a lot of negativity. Yeah, they've, <laughs> they've changed that since the first interviews. Yeah. You know, everybody was liking on her, and all of mm-hmm. a sudden... Well, no, not all of a sudden. They've been building that up for, for a while now. Well, I now. mean, within the interviews. Yeah. Thanks, Drew. Next up, we got an email from Christine B. 
Hello, Joanne and Stacy. I'm new to your podcast and actually like it very much. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Welcome aboard. The final eight seems to have fractures. Finally, with Joe gone. Wasn't it funny to see Ben so unbelievably excited to yeah. have Joe blindsided? It was as though he couldn't contain himself. That's a good description. I was very worried that Ashley had convinced her group to blindside Ben when he was working so hard to be the mole and hide his loyalty to his group of four. I'm hoping Devin will flip on Ashley and tell Ben about her failed plan to oust him. All right. Thanks, Christine. Yeah, great to have you here on the podcast. Good job. Next up, we got a call from Kenny. Hey, guys. Kenny from Dallas calling again. What I want to emphasize today is I sometimes watch the show and have no idea why people vote the way they do. Why? Why? Why, for example, did the group of four, who were also loosely aligned with Joe and the doctor, Mike, not take out either Ryan or Chrissy when they had their opportunity? Why did they vote out JP? It just strikes me that time and time again, players are left in the game who are truly dangerous when they could have been voted out with no problem. Who cares if he's a challenge problem? He hasn't won any immunity necklaces. Even if he thought he was a good physical challenger, well, how is he mentally with putting puzzles together? They should have gone after him, and keeping a dangerous player like Ryan or Chrissy around is a huge, huge mistake. Huge mistake. For all we know, JP didn't answer your questions because of his job. That's true, but maybe he just doesn't talk at the reunion show. What's the chance of him being asked questions? They have a cardboard cutout of him put in the in the row, <laughs> and they you just looked at it. Would you know he was even there or not? It's ridiculous not to let out a threat like Ryan or Chrissy. And look what happened in the next episode. Chrissy won immunity, and Ryan played his immunity necklace. I just don't get it. I'd like to see the group of four stay together, but I think they're going to split and fracture to try to target Ben. I think Ben is really in a good position if he could keep his head above water to win this game. He's played a really good game, and he would have a good story with him being a, a combat veteran. All right, interesting season. Take care, guys. Bye. Thanks, Kenny. Yep, see, there's that question again. How did it end up being JP? <laughs> Yeah, he I, I can't help but think they just thought he was the Easy. biggest challenge threat. Well, yeah, that was that might have been a part of it, I guess, a little bit. But he never delivered on any individual challenge. He never really threatened. Not so far, but I think he still intimidated them. Yeah, based on his other performance, his other mm -hmm. physical performances. And it neither was, did they. It was win. easy, and Ryan had an idol, and there's there were relationships with Chrissy, so some of that may carry him over when they're making decisions like that, as well as what we we're talking about, deciding, hey, that person's a fan, let's go ahead and let them stay a little longer, something like that. Poor Dr. Mike, you know when Probst is making fun of you with the other castaways, you're just not in a good place. <laughs> Thanks, Kenny. Next up, we got email from Josh the Plush Moose from Massachusetts. Dear Joanne and Stacy, this episode was a regular corn <laughs> regular cornucopia. Two food rewards, the coconuts driving people bananas, and the tribe threw out a sack of potatoes, JP. Lots of food for thought. Wah wah. My other observations. I'm glad Joe is finally gone. I was really tired of his in-your-face antisocial game. Lauren put her best foot forward in winning reward. That's good. <laughs> in the reward challenge, Dr. Mike showed why doctors don't operate with their feet. Mike and Joe call themselves the coconuts. Did they drop from a tree and land on their heads? That would explain their gameplay. While the other survivors worried about the usual suspects, quiet Lauren got verbal and turned into Kaiser Sose. I wonder why the letters from home weren't an announced part of that reward. Am I the only one who wanted to swipe left during Jeff's video ad? Funny how that big rock with the purple paint just showed up on a well-worn trail. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? The That's the clue, right, mm -hmm. that Ben found. I get the feeling that Ben is going to pull a Mike Holloway and go on an immunity and hidden idol run when his alliance turns on him. Ryan was confused. This was the floating doghouse challenge. The squat challenge was last week. I'll never understand players who skip immunity for peanut butter and chocolate. Devin's plans are rather complex. The only ingredient missing is sharks with lasers. <laughs> Freaking sharks with lasers. In a shocking survivor twist, Ben is the mole. Pot, meat, kettle. Chrissy doesn't like it when, her, when snarkiness is aimed at her. 
Outsiders on the bottom who think they're in charge, weasels who think their intended victims should work with them, perennial targets who feel comfortable. There seems to be an outbreak of cluelessness on the island. I wonder if Dr. Joe has a pill for that. I'm getting tired of the round table Dr. Ref- Mike. What's that? Dr. Mike, right? No. Dr. Oh, Joe oh, is oh, the Dr. survivor. Dr. Joe. Okay, never mind. Yeah, I got it. The real Dr. Joe. Yes. Okay. <laughs> A little slow, but I got there. Okay, back to Josh. I'm getting tired of the round table references. The next player to say knights, King Arthur, Merlin, or the like should get a personal tour of the pit of misery. With a resting smug face, Chrissy's going to have a hard time winning people over. Once again, the survivor gods reward the desperate with an immunity win. Funny how that keeps happening. What was up with Cole's hand signals at Tribal? Was he trying to hail a cab? Yeah, we ran that back and looked at it's it like, too. What? We, we had I no clue what he was doing. Next time, the loved ones visit and Ben crafts a fake idol. Wednesday can't come fast enough. Anyway, that's it from me for now. Thanks, Joanna Stacy, for all you do. Can't wait to hear what the other fans have to say. Thank you, Josh. You deliver every week. Good job. Next up, we got a call from Parker. Hey, what's going on? It's Parker from Indiana. And this was a crazy two-hour episode, well, back-to-back episodes, of Survivor. Oh, my goodness. I love it. Everybody was hoping that it'd get uh, crazy and that the Knights' round table would start turning against each other. I was hoping against that. I was hoping they'd just get up Joe, but that did happen, so yay. I thought Ben was going this episode. I thought this would be Ben's exit, and I was so worried once they started talking about getting out Ben, and I was like, no. Even though I would have gotten a vote off point, I don't want that to happen. At that second travel council, I had Ben and Joe as my vote off, so... Either way, I would have gotten a vote off, but I was a lot more happy with Joe going home than if Ben went home. I would have been so sad. Not just because he's my winner, but he's my favorite player this season. Devin, once again, super surprising. I mean, he was just great this episode. You know, discussion, is Devin really smart, or is he just... Is he playing up the surfer dude, or is he actually really smart? And I think this episode, we found out he is smarter than... You think Devin's got some game, and I, I love watching it. And then Lauren, uh, once again, is really surprising. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't target Ryan. Wouldn't Ryan be a priority or Chrissy over JP? What's mm-hmm. JP going to do? He's not going <laughs> to win a challenge and then rally everybody together and vote out so-and-so. It's JP. <laughs> JP's gone. I'm not crying over it. Just what a crazy episode. I'm so happy Ben did it go home once again. And it looks like next up he's going to make a fake idol. And that was so awesome when he found the idol. Was just, this was like Ben's episode. You know, the whole secret agent thing. It was so cool. And it just makes me happy that really showing himself as a survivor player. Like that's the kind of stuff you do. I don't know if ever, anyone's ever done that. Like the secret agent thing. That's that's. Awesome. And then loved ones visit. Yes. <laughs> I'm so excited. I mean, this, this episode was great. Good challenges, good blind sides, good, yeah, I mean, it's just great. That secret agent thing, oh my goodness, I can't believe that worked. <laughs> I'm going to try that. If I ever get on Survivor, I want to ha- make that happen. That little message at the beginning, before the first commercial break from Probst, apply for Survivor. And I was like, I will <laughs> keep yourselves on the air so that I can. Not yet, but a couple years. Oh man, I can't believe I'm gonna be 18 in a couple years. I'm on my birthday. I'm applying for Survivor. <laughs> I don't. I don't even care. Like it's no, you know, November 1st. That's not really a casting point, but I'm doing it anyway. I don't care. All right, I don't. That doesn't matter with the episode, but. I mean, it's just really exciting. I love this episode, and next episode looks awesome. Let's go Ben. Hopefully, he can keep outsmarting these people and win, because, I mean, I'd be really happy with seeing Ben win. Uh, He's hands down my favorite. All right, that's all I got. See you guys next time. All right, good job, Parker. Love your excitement for the game. Next up, we got an email from Jack in California. Hi, all. I'm still enjoying this season a lot, and I feel like it is just going to get better. What is it about sharing that you have an idol? It has and would never work out in your favor. I don't know why the cast always does this. It only leads to trouble. Keep the secret to yourself, and it would work out well. Share it, and you're basically gone. 
That first reward challenge looked quite tricky, but the reward was really neat. I believe it would always be nice to get love letters after not seeing them for a long time. Good on Ben, finding the idol clue and then getting the idol itself. I would never feel truly safe in the game, and so if I had the option of eating or playing, I would probably play all the time just to be safe. I did not expect to see JP go during the first council. That surprised me. The second immunity challenge looked fun. I thought Ashley did, a, did really well carrying all of the puzzle pieces in one take. If I was to try this challenge, I would try to solve the puzzle before placing the pieces to make it smoother. I believe that Chrissy needed that immunity win. As for the next week, Ben makes a fake idol and Devin falls for it. All right. Bold prediction. Thanks, Jack. Yeah, I think trying to solve it on the ground would probably help you. At least it wouldn't be as visible the way it was to so many others. I mean, they weren't able to capitalize on it this time. Oh, I think it would still be visible. No, not like it was up in the air where Devin and uh, Ashley and Ben and the others could all see it. If you've got it down on the ground, it's going to be a lot harder to see. Yeah, and you can block some of it that way. I think Jack's got a good point. Thanks, Jack. Next up, got a call from Jean. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. Hi, Survivor friends. This is Jean from Northwest Arkansas. I just wanted to check in. I have, I've been playing all season, but haven't sent any emails and have never made a, a call, so I thought I'd do it this time around. I'm really enjoying this season so far. I mean, the gameplay has been incredible. I'm not doing all that well. I think I'm at 41 points, so kind of mid-pack right now. Um, not doing really well with voting out choices. I picked Joe four weeks in a row and didn't do any good with him, and this week I just decided to try someone else and of course Joe got (laughs) voted off so anyway I'm still enjoying it I have no idea who I'm going to pick this week I think all the players that are left are really good I'm probably Chrissy's in the most trouble this week I think that she's probably pushing a lot of buttons and and annoying people whether she'll be end up being the goat and people will keep her around I don't know but uh, I have a feeling that she'll probably probably be the next to be voted off but I'm not sure. I lost my USB alley, and so I picked Ben, and so I'm kind of on pins and needles wondering how far he'll go. Mm. Probably not much farther. I think it's interesting the way he's going between both tribes, but I have a feeling that it's just a temporary solution for this, the other solid three and that Ben probably won't last much longer. I don't know. I'm really impressed with Lauren's play. I didn't think she'd last that long, didn't think she'd even make the merge. And I, I really think that she's probably playing the best game, even without that um, that great uh, advantage that she hasn't used yet. Hopefully she'll use it for a really big move. I don't know. I, I think, as I said, I think Chrissy's in trouble, probably Ben too. Uh, Unless Chrissy wins another immunity challenge, which is probably not likely. She'll probably be the next to go. Anyway, just thought I'd check in. It's I listen every week, and I'm really enjoying the podcasts and the, especially the listener feedback every week. Um, I miss all my old friends back in Northwest, or back in Sacramento, but uh, I'm really loving the Northwest Arkansas life. So have a good week, everybody, and take care. Oh, thanks, Jean. Welcome. She was from Roseville, you know. Yep. Yeah, we had, she'd sent emails before. I remember yeah. that now when I when I saw that. I'm over mm-hmm. in Roseville usually a couple times a week. I'll yes, be there you tomorrow, are. as a matter of fact. Ukulele that's right. jam. You will. And that's why Marla was able to get her feedback in. I was at a ukulele jam earlier today. Well, well not it was a jam a performance. Yeah, we were playing Christmas songs at the craft fair, so and that pushed our timetable back. So we're really glad you got that in, Marla. Thanks again, Jean. Last up, we got audio from Jen. Hi, everyone. This is Jen in California. Well, this week was full of surprises. Two great episodes back-to-back. And actually, that was the first surprise for me, the fact that it was two episodes (laughs) back-to-back. I don't know how I missed it. I don't know how I've listened to the podcast. I've watched the shows. I don't know why I didn't know this was a two-hour episode, but I didn't. Wow, that new group of four really shook things up this week. I was happy to see that Lauren used her choices strategically because that's never a good challenge to win. And I was actually a little bit disappointed initially that she did win it because, I don't know, I didn't see it as an advantage to her to get a target on her back for not picking people. But she definitely used it to her advantage, and she's quite a good communicator. She presented the case for the final four to the group, and they accepted it. 
And it's going to start getting messy in the end, I think, here. But I was happy to see Ashley kind of taking the reins on her own game, shaking things up. I was a little bit uncomfortable with seeing Devin enjoying his power. I feel like a little bit like he was like a dark Jedi or something. He was a good Jedi before and then he turned to the dark side and now he has these evil smiles and these laughs and the I'm in power statements. So I like him as a player, but I worry a little bit with, I think of the four of them, he seems to be the most quote unquote drunk with power. So I hope he doesn't let that get away with from him. I really liked the acting job that Ben did. That had to be a little bit tough. And I was going to be really disappointed if at that point they voted Ben off and not Joe. Because Ben stuck his neck out there and played along and played the fool a little bit in order to keep Joe and Mike in the dark. So while he may not make it to the end, I'm glad he at least got to see the payoff of Joe being voted out because he did work very hard to help make that happen. But now that Joe's gone, Ben really needs to get his head back in the game and open his eyes a little bit. Just like Ryan and Chrissy were too trusting in the group of seven, I hope that Ben does, just doesn't become too trusting of the group of four. Actually, as I'm taping this, I realized, you know, I haven't even listened to the recap yet. <laughs> I don't know how I forgot that I didn't do that. So I might be saying some of the things that Joanna and Stacy said before. I have no idea. It's going to be nice to listen to the recap before I listen to the listener feedback. The only explanation I can give for that is that work is really kicking my butt lately and not really sure whether I'm coming or going some of the time. But that's it for me. I can't wait to hear what everyone else has to say. These episodes were really, really fun to watch. And um, I just can't wait to see how this season winds down. Who does everybody want to see win? I think I'd kind of like to see Ben win. He'd be the most satisfying because he's been the most front and center. But since that usually doesn't happen, I think I'd be satisfied with a Devin win or a Lauren win. Ashley would have to do some good talking at Final Tribal, but can't wait to hear what everyone else has to say. Till next week. Bye. Thanks, Jen. I think I would be most satisfied with Ben or Lauren. Yeah, that seems to. I mean, I got Devin to win, but I certainly. Have Ryan. So, yeah, but. Certainly, they would, that would lead to what, at this point, juncture at least we've got three episodes before that'll happen before we get the final result but that does seem like it would be pretty satisfying given what we've had so far okay who's going home next gotta think you need to get rid of chrissy she doesn't win she needs to go i agree and you probably you'll have an equal choice if she doesn't win there's really almost no chance that ryan won so take your pick either one of them is fine i am picking Devin to go this week. I see. Okay. I think Ben's going to turn back on him, use his idol, bring Chrissy and Ryan back in, Mm -hmm. play the idol, and get the upper hand. Get the upper hand. Okay. Or get rid of one of the threats. One of the threats, yeah. So that it's it's, um, 3-3. And he can continue to bounce as long as someone doesn't take him out first. He, yeah. He's got the insurance policy and the hidden immunity idol, so well, he shouldn't be going this week. The The thing is, he may not even need to use the idol if they, if he can trust Mike to flip back, too. Mm-hmm. Because since they took Joe out, I don't think Mike's going to be so confident. Mike's, uh, Mike's probably like how Jen's been feeling. Doesn't know if he's coming <laughs> or going. Well, and he could get taken to the end that way if he he's got nothing to lose to flip back and forth probes just advertised him as being completely clueless in front of everyone there so yeah mm-hmm. including the jury right so, when, when probes is having fun at your expense in front of the jury you know things aren't good for you well my thought is i i think he should probably go for lauren over Devin, though i'd rather see him go after Devin just because uh, i think ben will trusts Devin more and he's going to be more upset if he overhears something that makes him if he gets any wind whatsoever that they're thinking of getting rid of him he had more game time with lauren though right yeah he did so he might trust her a little more but that's why i say he might get rid of Devin. could be yeah because Devin proved that he was pretty smart and even helped put a target on Ben's back by having him play that role. So I'm not sure there wasn't more to his thinking than than just uh, the way he presented it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I'm going to say Devin for today anyway. I'm still liking most of these folks at the end. I, there mm-hmm. could be, like you said, there could be some kind of redemption story for Ryan. Ashley seems like a, a self-acknowledged mm-hmm. long shot. Mike is the like furthest out f- 
for me for winning. I, I even I think Ryan's a long shot at this point. Yeah, but what if the final three were Mike, Ashley, and Ryan? Ew. <laughs> well, I would have to cheer for Ryan because uh-huh. that would be twenty four points for me. Okay, so you're but saying Jess F. Would, would rule at that point. I I would rather see Ryan. I like Dr. Mike, but he's, you know, the whole ego thing and the flip-flopping and not really. I I think Ryan, I would choose him more because he's a big fan. I think Ryan would have earned it more than Ashley and Mike. And yeah, that's why I, I that would favor too. Ryan. Dr. Mike really can't seem to get out of his own way. So I don't see him as earning it. And Ashley herself said that she would, she started playing on day 28. So yeah, I'm not really keen on that for sure. But if Ben goes with anybody other than Lauren, I think he's a shoe in to win. Could be. Yeah, could be. Unless we got a really bitter jury. Yeah. You got to look at that jury and try to suss out what what they're thinking and of course we we've got to add quite a few there we've got to send at least four more to the jury at this point well let's get to jp's questions and we'll see how he's gonna decide who to vote for uh, jack wagon okay, okay just- so we we were uh we were told that we could send three questions via email and jp would answer those and get back so we ask him what surprised you the most when you saw it on TV and what do you wish they'd shown about you didn't get aired? And he said the thing that surprised him the most was how the show was edited. CBS did a great job. That's it. That's all he offered there. We asked for his assessment on the cast, uh, his tribe mates, hoping, who knows, maybe completely didn't, skipped it. Didn't answer that. Didn't even we bother were, to answer it. Yep, we were only allowed three questions and he chose to do the, the bonus one that you slipped in there. So. Yeah. Okay, and question the, number three. Who would you like to see win, and what criteria will you do use to decide who you give the money to? And he responded, I would go for the underdog, whoever that may be. And that makes no sense to me, but I think that's completely in keeping with JP's ability to play the game. So, I don't know. Is there anything else you want to add to that? I just said recruit. <laughs> yeah, he had to so have done Hollywood a recruit. recruit. Yep. <laughs> Okay, and the bonus I question. Asked a, I threw a bonus question in there, yeah. too, because there was a great video of him talking about how he would like to use the money to help uh, the foundation that supports an illness that his sister has. So yeah, I thought, oh, maybe sister. that's that's a great angle to watch in with your family. Maybe he's been able to watch with her. And, and so I just threw that in as a bonus. So what's it been like watching with family and friends? How did they react? And I asked, was added included in there, did you get to watch with your little sister that we saw in that extra video? And uh, basically he said, uh, not too much as I work a lot. So translation, I'm not watching the show. Yeah. At the fire department, we have 24-hour shifts. Yeah, we know how fire departments work. And uh, he said, my little sister's working up north right now, but we stay in touch as much as possible. So, no, he hadn't watched anything with her. So uh, I'm not sure he's watched at all. I, yeah, I don't think based on the first one he's actually watched this but season. That's, and that, that's you know what, doesn't surprise him. me. Okay. Yeah, we, you certainly come across castaways that fall into that yeah. category, and he seemed to have been trending that way the whole time. So yeah. I, I guess we should So now have, I'm okay that we didn't do the, the verbal. Yeah. Interview. We shouldn't be surprised. So. Though maybe he's just really busy. Whatever. It's it. Ask. Done. Yes, so. we're done with JP. So there we are. Hey, we want to say a big thank you to everybody who took the time to write and call and record their audio and send it in and share their thoughts and predictions this week. Huge thanks to Christy, Catherine, and Hazel for your subscription donations. Thank you very much. We greatly appreciate it your continued support towards our operational costs here at the show. And be sure to get your picks in before the deadline on Wednesday. I wonder if I'll stay with Devin and how many times I'll flip-flop before I actually make my picks. Devin's not going anywhere. I he and Ben just have to work him. some things out. And Ben's uh, going mm-hmm. to humble him a little, and then he'll bring him back to the flock, and then they'll figure out how to take care of the, the next know. steps. I think he's going to fight hard, but I think Ben wants this, this money. Oh, sure he does. Yeah. I won't say a lot. But he had already settled on working towards it with Devin. So. Yeah, but Devin, I think, is going to disappoint him somehow. I think Ben's just going to teach him a lesson, but uh-huh. he'll still be in the game. I think he'll teach him a lesson, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, but from the jury? <laughs> yeah. we got different views on that, I suppose. Okay. Well, that is a wrap on the double. Yep. 
Have a good one.